Welcome to Comic and Screen. I'm Sam Martin, and with me is Jason Book. And in this video, we're going to be talking about our anticipation for Batman The Killing Joke, which is the new uh, animated universe film that's coming out from DC and Warner Brothers Animation. Coming out this summer in just a couple months, a lot of excitement for it. It's based on you know one of the classic Batman graphic novels by Alan Moore and art by Brian Bolland. Uh, and now we're going to see it in animated form. Um, pretty pumped for it. They have released uh, a new official trailer. They've also released um, like a 10-minute featurette that t uh, talks to the creators. We've got Bruce Tim as a producer. We've got Sam Liu as a director. He's directed several of the other animated films, um, the voice actors. And that came as part of the Justice League vs. Teen Titans movie um, that was already released. So we're getting some nuggets of things, but we also know it's based on that graphic novel. So we have a lot to look forward to. So let's start, first of all, with just the, the legendary graphic novel and how you think that might translate over to the animated universe and the tone, how the tone might come over into, you know, now this live, uh, this animated, you know, motion style. Yeah, so first up, like, it, it's a huge benchmark for Batman. It always bugged me in a way that uh, Alan Moore kind of craps on it, you know, and like, I think a, a writer shouldn't do that. I know he distances himself with some of his DC work, but it really is a great piece of fiction for Batman and for the Joker as well. Um, so yeah, basically we know that it's going to be R rated and you know, that's got some stuff in there that's definitely out there for subject matter for the Batman, uh, you know, animated movies that we've seen so far. So I just wonder how that's going to translate into it as a piece. I think if it's handled well, it'll be fine. But some people, if they haven't read it, they may not know what to expect going into it. Mm -hmm. I do. It does look like they're going all in on the tone. Um, this actually has an R rating, yeah. uh, and it's an animated movie that usually stores put it in like the kids' family aisle type thing because it looks <laughs> like a nice animated movie with Batman. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is rated R, so it's definitely going to be different. Uh, but I think that means that they are trying to capture just how brutal the graphic novel is, and that brutality is kind of the point of the graphic novel too because Joker is trying to do this whole thing about one bad day. Yeah. So that, w that one bad day needs to get pretty brutal. That's kind of the whole point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there was that, and then also... The artwork of Brian Bolland, um, even if you mm -hmm. haven't read Killing Joke, you'd be familiar with it. He did a lot of DC covers over the years. He used to do all the covers for Animal Man. He had a run on The Flash. Uh, he did some Batman covers as well. And uh, his artwork is super detailed and very mm -hmm. fine lines. And when I saw the trailer, I thought, yeah, it has the shape of his characters, but I don't know if it's pulled off the details. So I'm just wondering how okay. it's going to kind of translate for that for the entire piece as well. Yeah, like for me, the, I feel like they're going for it with the tone, but you know, in animation when you're doing like 20 frames a second or something, uh, you can't have obviously all that detail. It's just impossible to you know have it match through. Yeah. So they, they go down to the animation style, but I will say in the trailer there were a few shots of like Batman's face and then Batman sitting down with the Joker, and I'm like, oh, that doesn't look that good it, it yeah. looks closer to like somebody's homemade youtube animation video <laughs> yeah, than know. it is to the brian bolland like amazing art yeah i'm with but you man yeah i know that you know they're they're doing the best that they can and some of these other animated movies that they've done have looked really good but oh, totally, this one yeah. maybe it is because people know the the bolland art so well that you you look at it with a different lens than just you know justice league versus teen titans where you come in at you come into it just sort of expecting it to be an animation style yeah I, i'm with you on that like to me if they ever did like um you know a version of one of the famous neil adams batman stories or something like that where you know what it's supposed to look like so much mm -hmm. you'd really be noticing it in the animation whereas like even the Justice League War didn't look that bad because it had hints of Jim Lee, but it didn't look exactly like it. Because I think we right. were really focused on the new costume designs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So for something like this, yeah, I think they really would want to like look at it first and say, can we really translate this to animation? And if it is jarring to someone who's read the book, then that definitely could be an issue. Yeah. Um, it could be something, though, too, that maybe it works better in the context of the movie because you yeah. can just get into the flow more. That's but maybe when you see quick little shots, it kind of jumps out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and especially if the voice acting is really good, that can kind of carry through even if the animation. But one thing I do appreciate is uh, with the animation that they are 
incorporating some of the iconic layouts at least. Yes. So even if the detail isn't there, they're hitting their beats in terms of, oh, that's a shot that reminds me right of the graphic novel, or oh, they made sure to do the photograph shot, or that, you know, there's just yeah. in the preview material already, we've seen a few of the iconic panels. Well, and that's it too. I think that's really hitting the nail on the head is why we are comparing it so with kind of a high level of scrutiny is because he really had probably at least a handful or maybe 10 shots in that book where they're super iconic shots of Batman yeah. or the Joker. So you know that it's got to hold up to that. And I think you're right. If they come in it the right way, it should do pretty good. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the voice actors. Um, so they've got Mark Hamill for the Joker and they have Kevin Conroy back for Batman. And that's one thing that I have really liked from the preview material in the trailer is I like those voices. To me, I just connect right away with those two voices as those two characters. Yeah, I do as well. Um, they've done the voices in in pretty much a lot of different things. I mean, like, it really held up well in the Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, which had a little bit more of an adult tone. So I think it's going to bode well for this one. And even Kevin Conroy did the Batman in the Gotham Knight, uh, the one that kind of had different styles of animation, like anime and things like that. But for this one... I just want to make sure that it doesn't take me out of that it's supposed to be really dark versions of these characters because, mm -hmm. you know, when I first heard Kevin Conroy talk as Batman there, I was like, oh, does it sound a little bit too much like the animated series? But I'm hoping that, once again, kind of like those iconic shots, as we get into the movie a few minutes, I'll kind <clears> of <throat> get used to it. Yeah, I think I think it will work out. And I think Mark Hamill is actually going to it pretty hardcore i think That's he's really like, yeah. i think he put him his whole self into this performance so i think he's going to take it to another level than he did with his previous joker stuff yeah that sounds pretty good and i actually liked what he did in the return of the joker one too so it had a little bit more edge to it so i'm sure we're going to see him go go full out yeah now the the creative team behind it they talked about you know adapting the graphic novel and they said actually when you take that graphic novel and you lay it out as a movie they actually said it was too short yeah. so they needed to find some ways to actually add some minutes uh to mm -hmm. the movie and I think they made a pretty good call in how they did that cuz one of the things they added is they actually added some Batgirl stuff at the yeah. beginning to establish Batgirl get you connected with a little bit of what she's doing as Batgirl before some of the events of The Killing Joke. Yeah, because if you've read the book, you know, Batgirl basically has a bad day too. Um, but um, by fleshing out some more of her character earlier on, it's going to make mm -hmm. that payoff even better. Uh, and yep. uh, I trust them to, to do the right things with it because obviously they know it's such a good story and it's a pretty iconic story that if you just threw something in there, it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So I'm pretty sure it's going to fit well. Yeah, and I think the beginning is a good place to do it because once the momentum gets rolling, gets rolling and you hit Act 2 and Act 3, you basically want to just keep going with what Alan Moore set up, I think. Yeah, no doubt I'm with you on that. Yeah, so cool. I mean, uh, so a lot of good stuff to look forward to. Hopefully the animation style works out once you're actually in the story and ho hopefully the pacing of the story and everything uh, kind of allows us to go through it. Um, and, you know, it's a different medium, so they can't actually do Balin's art, but... Um, mostly I'm just pretty excited and I can't wait to see it when it does come out. Yeah, me too. I mean, when you look back at some of these animated movies they've done, they've done a lot of good things and it kind of makes me interested to see what they're going to, I'm sure they'll announce a new one at Comic-Con too. So I'm looking forward to that. 